I can't believe we are all here today. I thought this day would come much later in my life, when my grandpa could see us all grown with our children of our own. It is so difficult to say how much I loved my grandpa. He was very special to me, and I loved him dearly. Over the past few days, my family and I have been going through all the great memories we shared together. For me, my grandpa was my first babysitter, and I loved going over to his house when I was younger to spend time with my cousins and brother, where he taught, grandpa taught me how to massage, which I am sure Jerry appreciates now. <laughs> so thank you, grandpa. As most of my family knows, I also got a love for mangoes from grandpa too. <laughs> when I moved away, to Gladstone, every time I came back to visit Grandpa, he made me my favorite sweet chicken curry. <laughs> he knew how much I loved it, and it shows how much he loved me too. He was always so kind to everyone, and I got my caring nature from him, and the love that I have for my family is eternal, just like his love was. I also got my sense of humor from him. He was always telling me jokes, most of which was about picking on my poor nanny. <laughs> and even now, he used to send me jokes by email. I'm going to apologize in advance because my joke telling skills are not so great, <laughs> but sometimes neither were grandpa's. <laughs> the last joke he sent me went like this. A father and a son went deep sea fishing. While out at sea, the father sees his son drilling a hole in the boat. When asked what he was doing, the son replied, there's water coming into the boat, so I made another hole for it to escape. <laughs> It is so painful to say goodbye now. I love you, Grandpa, so much. And I can't believe I won't get to dance with you at my wedding. I miss you, Buddha. I miss the way you used to smile at my jokes, even though I know your hearing aid was off. I miss the way when we used to play cards, you would always take a cheeky look at what other people had. I remember you, Gramps. I remember how you raised me like your own boy, how you made me a big bowl of fruit and supervised my homework every day after school. I remember how you dropped me to class and you would wait outside the classroom until I waved. I will always remember how my last conversation with you was a joke about a bug in your ear. <laughs> but I still see you, Buddha. I see you and your kids. I see you and Oscar and children. I see your intelligence. I see your good nature. And I especially see your cheekiness. I love you, Buddha. Goodbye. My grandpa was a great man. He commanded respect and adoration and greeted everyone with a smile, a smile that was contagious. I'm so grateful to have been able to spend such a good day with him just before his passing. Even though he had taken a pretty bad fall and was in pain and discomfort, he insisted on spending time with the family. This is the most important lesson that I learned from my grandpa, that family is the most important thing in the world. Perhaps he sensed that his time was near and refused to give up a moment that he could spend with his family. Every time we gathered on Saturday nights, I could see that he was content. He could just sit there, happy knowing that he'd passed this lesson on. At the same time, regardless of how many people were there, he knew if you ate your kana or not. A few weeks ago, we were all gathered, and as usual, there was an assortment of sweets on the coffee table. My uncle Anya went to eat the sweet, and quick as a whip, Grandpa was on him, saying, Eat your kana first. It was Nietzsche who proposed, what if someday, at all night, a demon were to steal after you in your loneliest loneliness and say to you, this life as you now live it and have lived it, you will have to live once more and innumerable times more. Would you not throw yourself down and gnash your teeth and curse the demon who spoke thus? Or have you experienced a tremendous moment when you would have answered him, you are a god and never have I heard anything more divine? With his life full of cherished memories, adventure, and the loving family that he worked so hard to create. My grandpa would have definitely been the latter. Grandpa was a Hindu, and being the man that he was, he has some good karma coming his way. 
I like to think that he can come back as whatever he wants. And with this in mind, here's a poem I wrote for my grandpa. What will I be when I open my eyes? Will I be something that swims or something that flies? So do not feel sorrow when you say your goodbyes, for I am still here, I'm just in disguise. If I am a bird, I will soar to great height to watch over you all and make sure you don't fight. Look up in the sky and you know you just might see me high above you, enjoying my flight. If I am a tree, I hope I will be a tree that is fruit. It's important, you see, that when you decide to come and see me, if your belly is full, it makes me happy. I'm sure you all miss me, but I want you to know that I'll still be with you for a long time to go. So whether you see me today or tomorrow, remember to say not goodbye, but hello. I feel bad because I'm the only one that hasn't prepared something in advance. I tried to, but I couldn't work out what to say. So I'm just going to wing it now. Everybody who knows me well has heard about my grandfather. He's my favorite person in the world. He was more of a father to my brother and I because he raised us pretty much from when we were young children, bathed us, fed us, dropped us to the bus stop and waited till the bus drove away before he'd leave, be there every afternoon consistently to pick us up, never being late. Like Shane said, we had plates of fruit ready. He looked after us and at our homework. But there's other things that I'll just never forget. Him dancing in the lounge room, singing the banana song that you heard earlier. <laughs> we don't even know what it's called. We all just know it is Grandpa's banana song. How he'd come into the chemist and let all the ladies I worked with rub his belly because I told them it was good luck, and he was our Buddha. The memory I have been thinking about this past week more than any other was when I was doing my HSC, and I had a big fight with my mom, and I was a rebellious teenager, left home, stayed with my friend for a week. My grandfather called me over, and I went there. And he sat me on the swing and he looked at me and he just said, I'm so disappointed in you, Bete. And I started crying, drove back to my friends, packed up my stuff and went straight home. <laughs> I would have done anything for him. So thank you, Grandpa. You'll never be forgotten. I'll keep telling everyone about you. Your grandchildren are all going to tell our kids about you as well. And I'm so glad that I got to spend so much time with you.